Okay guys, I'm going to make a video of how to replace the quill bearings. Now I don't have a quill with a stop rod casting on it, so briefly to get the quill out, remove your two knurled nuts on the stop rod collar, advance the quill out with those nuts off it will come out in your hand once you get the quill out let your spring tension off easy don't let the handle go or you could damage your return spring once you get the quill out there's two set screws that holds the stop rod casting on the quill one's on top one's 90 degrees around to the front side now the front one could be covered with putty and painted over and you might not even be able to see it until you chip that putty out. Remove the set screws and then you can uh, tap the quill out, set this on a vise or something, tap the quill out with a rubber hammer and you'll have something that looks like this. Once you get the quill out can remove the front stop rod collar. Then you want to tap the quill out, the spindle out the back side. And you can do that, uh, you can set it on your vise, open the vise up where you're just catching the edges, the quill itself. You don't want to be scraping on the spindle. Use a rubber hammer, tap the quill out, oh I forgot to that's okay. The bearing will stay in the quill. Once you get the spindle out, then you can get to the set screw to remove the rear bearing retaining collar. Then, to get that rear bearing off, if the bearing is no good and you're not worried about damaging it, then this is this is not critical. You can just set it in a vise. Don't squeeze on the spindle, just tight enough to catch the bearing and then you can tap the bearing out. If you want to save the bearing, this particular 10ER spindle is a smaller diameter. I got a half inch washer here. Uh, I don't know, um, maybe that's a 5 eighths washer, I don't know for sure, it's one I had in the box. Slips over that, just barely, and it will catch the inside race of the bearing and keep you from damaging the shields. And you can tap that out. You don't have to tap very far. There's a small raised portion there where it's a press fit on the bearing. Okay? Then you got your spindle. Okay. Okay, one thing I forgot, I'm gonna have to try to edit this back in. All 10ER spindles are not the same. This particular one is larger in diameter than the one I just replaced the bearings on. So this uh, washer that I used will not go on there. I had to get a bigger washer 
so it slip over that inside part and it's still uh, with this larger diameter spindle portion there's very little of the inside race sticking out to grab onto whatever you use on this either use a bearing separator tightened up good or uh, you need a washer that's exactly uh, just a, a very close slip fit on that spindle or it's going to damage the shields on the bearing. If you're not trying to save the bearings, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, that's it. Then you got your spindle. Okay, then you take your new bearings. I'm not going to put new bearings on this one. This is for demo only. Go to the hardware store and get you a half inch pipe nipple about six inches long. I cut the threads off of this one because I use it all the time in the in the press. That fits right on there and it'll catch the inside race of the bearing. The inside race of these bearings is a press fit. get your pipe on there then you can tap that bearing in place that will not damage the bearing where you get trouble is trying to tap on the outside when the inside race is the press fit the impact on the outside race has to transfer to the balls in the bearing and then to the inside race and it will damage the balls if you try to tap on the outside. Now one, okay once you get your new bearing on the back end you want to put your rear retaining collar back on and I hope I'm getting all this in view. This camera mounted on my head Okay, tighten up the bearing collar on the rear side and you want to remove the old bearing from the front. You can tap it out. Okay, now when you get ready to reinstall, you get your new bearing on the rear end and the retaining collar on there. Slide that in the quill. The outside of these bearings, both front and rear, is a slip fit. Take your new bearing, set it on the spindle, Back your spindle up, take your pipe nipple and put on there and gently tap that bearing in making sure that you out line up the outside race with the quill. That will install the new bearing without damage. Then put your front retaining collar on there. Make sure it's jammed up tight against the bearing. And I always line that set screw up with the flat on the uh, spindle because that's the way all of them that I've ever taken apart were lined up to start out with. And there, you're done. Now notice Without the stop rod casting on the front, the whole assembly has about an eighth of an inch of end play. The stop rod casting is what traps the front bearing in its place and eliminates all, if it's done properly, eliminates all end play. 
out of the shaft. Okay, then you uh, reinstall your stop rod casting and the best way to do that is with the set screws out you can look through the hole and see the two places where those set screws have been heading so you can line that up properly it makes it a whole lot easier because the stop rod casting has to be lined up with that uh, stop rod at 90 degrees from the center line of the quill teeth and that's difficult to do unless you center those set screw marks in the holes before you tighten them up and then uh, to put it back in advance your quill three and a half to four times slide the uh, quill back in and you'll have to work your pinion gear in there a little bit till you get the get the uh, quill teeth lined up with the pinion and it'll go back in. It'll start in and then it may stop in about a, a half an inch or so and you'll have to turn the spindle to get the spline teeth lined up with the drive sleeve so that it'll go all the way in. Put your knurled nuts back on and you're in business. I guess that's it for now. Check me out on my new MKC Tools YouTube channel.